this great and good day, we celebrate the long and good life of our colleague, our neighbor, our mentor, and our friend, John Kenneth Galbraith. One of the longest, most varied, most influential lives ever to have graced this community. A life that spanned the First World War, the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression, the Second World War, the McCarthy period, the New Frontier, the Great Society, Vietnam, and all that has happened since. Ken Galbraith not only lived through these events, he played an active part in most of them. Well, so it was with, with me. He had a fine poker face. And you would not know for sure from the study of it that he was engaged in teasing a cherished mode. Now sit down and listen. I think I told you this before, but you didn't listen. <laughs> not listening to me is a highly developed skill of yours. You have a great opportunity. You must denounce the Iraq war. Your credentials as a conservative will soar, and your influence will be critical. I'm seldom wrong in these uh, matters. <laughs> when was I wrong, you asked? When I predicted George McGovern would be elected. I wasn't wrong. The voters were wrong. <laughs> Tall physically, tall intellectually, tall morally, possessed of the sharpest uh, wit, wit, uh, wit and a uh, dauntless uh, liberalism. Uh, this is a philosophy now heavily assailed, but it has been the most uh, creative and uplifting spirit in the American political tradition. During these Kennedy years that now seem so carefree, President Kennedy grew tired of the static from a phone wire strung on fences to the Galbraith's house in rural Vermont, so he arranged for a whole new line to be constructed. I was in my 20s and as starstruck by Camelot as anybody else, but I was still less impressed with Ken's access to the president than I was with the president's good taste in advisors. Think about this. Who else could be so incorruptible, so aerial in his view of history, and yet so democratic in his spirit? There might not have been a new frontier without him. At a critical early moment leading up to the 1960 campaign, Ken and Arthur Schlesinger, both giants in the ADA and strong supporters of Adlai Stevenson in 1952 and 1956, announced that they would support Jack for president in 1960. And their decision instantly gave Jack the gravitas he needed to become a serious candidate. After the election, Jack asked Ken to do a first draft on the inaugural address. In, in the final version, one of Ken's lines stood out that we should be heeding much more today. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. I last saw him three days after he died in an enormous casket, and it was there I finally found the words I feel befit him. Fresh from the mortuary storeroom, the casket mistakenly still carried an inventory tag that read, John Kenneth Galbraith, oversized. I did not write those words, but will always wish I had. John Kenneth Galbraith, oversized. I think they get him just right. 